In this video, we will be discussing the sodium potassium ATPase pump, its function, and how we can treat certain diseases or conditions by manipulating this pump. Before we begin, I just want to make sure that we're on the same page. This pump has many names, such as the NAK pump or the sodium potassium ATPase, but they all refer to the same thing and they all are kind of used interchangeably. The sodium potassium pump is probably the most important pump that you will learn about and definitely the most common one that you'll learn about. Before we begin, we should discuss active transport, which is what this pump does. So active transport is when you move substances against a concentration gradient. So since it's going against the concentration gradient, you need energy and this pump uses energy in the form of ATP. Now that we've kind of covered some background information about the pump, let's dive into it and discuss it in more detail. So specifically, what does this pump do? Well, this pump moves sodium out of the cells and potassium into the cells. If we want to get more specific, it's three sodium ions that will leave the cell while two potassium ions will enter the cell. Now let's talk about how this occurs. Let's take a look at this image down here. I've put two images here that you can refer to. Let's take a look at this image first though. The pump is first open to the inside of the cell, the intracellular space down here. So the pump is first open to the inside of the cell and will bind to three sodium ions. The sodium ions here are the orange things right there. So it'll bind to three sodium ions, and then when this occurs, the pump will break down one ATP molecule, which is why it's called an ATPase, since it breaks down ATP molecules. And then when the ATP breaks down, one phosphate group remains attached to the pump, which then causes the pump to change its shape, and then it'll open towards the extracellular space. And then once in the extracellular space, as shown here, it will release the sodium molecules. When it's facing the outside, the pump will bind to the potassium ions here, shown in yellow. And then this triggers the phosphate group, as shown right over here, to fall off. And when the phosphate group falls off of the pump, it will cause it to revert back to its original shape, which is opening towards the inside of the cell. If you're having a hard time remembering what goes in and what goes out, I like to remember it as, nah, get out. So now, as you can imagine, if you are removing three positive ions and taking in one positive ion, you would be getting rid of more positive ions from inside the cell. Therefore, the inside of the cell would be more negative compared to the outside. And as you can see over here, we have more sodiums on the outside and more potassium ions on the inside. And remember that this is all done to establish the resting membrane potential, and this helps cells function properly. So as shown here, this is why the sodium potassium pump is important. So without it, there would be issues with the nerve cell action potentials, muscle contractions, as well as glucose absorption by the intestinal cells. It also helps the cell maintain its membrane voltage, as well as maintain the cellular volume, which we'll talk about a little bit in the future. Let's discuss a little bit more about just how important this pump is. There are many drugs that can act on this sodium potassium pump. For example, there's a cardiac drug called digoxin, which can inhibit this pump. And it works mostly in the heart, so this will lead to the inhibition of another sodium calcium exchanger, which increases the calcium inside the cells to increase cardiac contractility, or how hard the heart can pump. It's sometimes used in patients with heart failure. Additionally, if there is a stroke in the brain, it can inhibit the sodium potassium pump in the brain. And since you won't be getting rid of the ions from inside the cell anymore, you'll have more ions inside the cell, which draws water in and causes edema and swelling of the brain. And this is called cytotoxic edema. I think one of the most important things about this pump is to understand how it influences potassium in the blood. So if someone has hyperkalemia or too much potassium in the blood, it can cause a fatal arrhythmia. We can take advantage of this pump to try to manipulate the potassium levels in the blood. 
take a second to think about what we would want to do to this pump in order to bring potassium from the blood into the cells. So just take a minute, pause if you need to, to think about what would happen. In this situation, we give insulin and glucose to fix the hyperkalemia. How this works is that the insulin we know will bring glucose inside of the cells, so we need to give glucose so we don't drop someone's blood sugar too low. But insulin also activates the sodium potassium pump to bring potassium from outside the cell to inside the cell. Another drug that can activate the sodium potassium pump are beta agonists like albuterol, which people can take for asthma usually. So these are the drugs that are given when someone has too much potassium in their blood. Lastly, something else that can influence this pump is thyroid hormone. If someone has hyperthyroidism, in which they have too much thyroid hormone, it can increase metabolism because it will increase the sodium potassium pump activation, causing your body to use up more ATP and more energy. So now let's sum up the important facts that I want you to take away from this video. The sodium potassium pump moves three sodium molecules out of the cell and two potassium molecules into the cell to maintain the resting membrane potential. There's a high concentration of sodium outside the cell and a high concentration of potassium inside the cell. Certain drugs like digoxin, insulin, and albuterol can all affect the sodium potassium pump. Thank you for watching this video, and if you got this far, please give this video a like and share it. Comment below with questions or if you want us to make a video on a different topic. Lastly, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a future video.